Good morning everybody, it's Adam from Blackrock Outfitters and this is part 6 of the Nomad build. Right, don't panic, I haven't murdered anybody, that's not blood, it's just red oxide. I was just going to touch up the wheel arches and I thought, you know what, just do the complete thing because they have been bashed about quite a bit so it's better to just coat it in one go. The main floor is not too bad at all to be honest, there's just a little bit, you know, where the, where the ploy floor has been rubbing mainly. And that's about it, but um, that's still wet at the moment, so what I'm going to do is, I'm going to fetch out the templates from over there. I'm going to start cutting out the floor, so I'll set up the tripod while I'm doing that, that'll give you something to look at. Once this is dry, obviously I'll put the floor in, offer the floor up. Usually get a good fit on the floor, um, don't really need to trim it as such, but because these have been damaged quite a bit, I'm wondering whether there might be sort of gaps or the lines may be off. So I may have to sort of fettle those into place. But they don't look too bad. There's a few little lumps here and there, but overall, not too bad at all. Right, I'm going to get the camera set up, get the floor done. See you in a sec. Well, you've got to love the British weather. As you can see, I've got a little bit of uh, rain on there. So, um, I was trying to work out solid, and then it just absolutely battered it down. I was going to set the camera up, cutting that last piece, but it just didn't happen. So, um, yeah, there you go. The floor fits anyway. Obviously, it's all over the shop at the minute because it needs uh, screwing down. The arches are quite bad. Uh, I've managed to like, leave a bit of a lip on, on each side just to account for... Uh, how damaged they are but what I'm gonna do is I've had to think and I'm gonna box those in anyway I usually carpet line over the arches and leave the arches bare but oh, I just I can't do it to myself I can't leave that like that so I'm gonna put some boxes over those the, the, there's gonna be a bench over the top of that anyway but for me you know I'd, I'd rather just box it in it just makes it look a bit nicer when you lift the uh, the bench up doesn't it so yeah that's it um, I've got another little piece that uh, I need to cut into there. I have got a template for that piece. Um, I haven't recorded it purely because it's sunny now, but I know in a second it's going to just belt it down with rain again. So, um, yeah, once I've got that in, I'll do another little shot. Um, the rubber penny floor is actually going to be going on next once this is uh, screwed down. So, that is over here. These are just some off cuts that I've got uh, that I'll keep just in case you want to do any sort of little jobs or anything, you know, like faces or anything like that. But it's really hard wearing, um, it's really easy to clean, I mean you can clean it with like 101 cleaner or just normal household cleaners and stuff when you're out in your van. Uh, really easy to lay, um, doesn't take too much cutting around the edges and uh, it does last a long time. So yeah, that's what we're going to be doing with that. I will see you in a second. Right, try. You know that one where you set the camera up, uh, you start putting the rubber floor in and then you don't realise the camera's cut out? Yeah, that happened. Um, the rubber floor's in now. Obviously, I'm not going to show it you being put in because that didn't work, did it? So, let's have a look at it now it's in place. I did try to do it for you, but it just wouldn't have it. Ta-da! A rubber floor. Now, at the moment, it needs cleaning, obviously. Um, it's going to have all extra bits put on here and there's like a tread strip and everything. So, don't be too alarmed of, uh, of what it looks like at the moment. Um, the wheel arches, as I said, they're going to be boxed in. So once that's all boxed in, there's going to be insulation put in there as well. It just gives a little bit more um, protection from the cold coming up through there because that is literally bare metal um, straight outside. So that, that's nice to get that sort of insulated. Um, the next bits that I'm going to be doing 
is actually doing these side pieces um, that run up there. So that'll be boxed in, um, and I've got a good template for that. So that'll all be uh, be put in. Then I'm probably going to move on to doing uh, the walls. I'll get the walls done. Um, it's pretty easy with these with, with the windows out. Um, my templates, I've got the holes cut out anyway, um, if I need them. But obviously the windows are out, so you just offer your board up, go around the outside, draw around the aperture, and that's enough to hide the curtains. Um, the curtains have arrived this morning, so I've got curtains all around the van, so in those two pieces and in the back doors as well. Um, so yeah, I'll probably get the curtains in. Um, the the uh, walls will go in as well. Then I'll get on to the actual roof, which is going to be laminate. Um, I still need to go and pick that up actually. So yeah, I'll uh, I'll get that in uh, one of the days. But yeah, that's going to be the next bit doing these side pieces. Well, you know we're getting serious when the templates start coming out. I've jumped ahead quite a bit, and I've got these in place. Now these are only roughly put in place at the moment. This is just so I can scribe the back so I know where the window aperture is. It's obviously easier to do this with the windows out. You can do it with the windows in, but it does take quite a bit of skill to do that. And uh, even I'm not that great at doing that. Um, and I've been doing this as a full-time job. So yeah, do it with the windows out if you can remember. I've left that one off there, the surround, like I said, uh, just to show you what it is. So. Those are the surround pieces that I'll scribe in. They're quite difficult to make actually. You can do it, um, you can do it yourself. If you just take your time, get yourself some cardboard and sort of scribe it in. But that will be going on that piece there. I always get these boards in first and then put that on after because it just sets it out a little bit more and you get a bit more to play with. Uh, as you can see, the cab shelf is in. It's gonna be a bit difficult to see that, but uh, cab shelf's in. So that's all trimmed up and covered. And that side there is actually in. So we've got a lovely fit on there. As you can see, oh God, oh, nearly fell over. So yeah, you can see that bit there. I'll just scribe that little piece in the bottom there and then follow it all the way up. And then once the floor, uh, once the roof is in, the roof sort of pushes that in and keeps that nice and tight anyway. But it is pinned all the way down, so yeah. So what I'm going to do now is I'm obviously going to do this side as well. I'm going to get a panel on there and do the same with that side. I'm just going to go outside and show you what I'm talking about when I say scribe it in. So this is obviously what it looks like from the outside. What I'm going to do is uh, there's going to be curtains all the way around on this van. So let me see if I can get this brightened up. So there's the, uh, there's the inside of the window there. Now what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna get a pencil, and I can get it out of my pocket. Um, and all I do is I just run, I just run a pencil on there. I don't run it all the way around. I just get a level on that side there, mark it, and then I do the same on this side, mark it, and then I'll get a straight edge, and I'll run it straight along. I'll do the same for the sides, and the same for the top. So you get basically the same thing all the way around. Um, I sometimes do them square, sometimes round them off. Uh, I'll probably round these off because they do look a bit softer when you're inside the van. Um, and then the curtains just sit on the inside. So curtains will be in the inside there and they'll run along there with the track and the curtains will be butted up against there. So in theory, you don't see any metal um, and all you do see is obviously the frontage of the curtain. When the curtains are drawn, you've got a lovely plinth there covering everything up. They draw across nicely and they mate up really well. So that's it. That's uh, that's what I'm going to be doing uh, next. As I said, I'm not. It's really difficult to film film it as I'm going to be honest because it obviously it takes quite a long time to do these sort of jobs. Um, but I thought I'd just give you an explanation rather than actually showing me doing it. Um, and you can get a, get an idea that way. I don't want this to be like a massive in-depth tutorial as such. Um, I just want to show you like the basic stages of uh, building the vans here at um, Black Rock Outfitters. So, yeah, stay tuned. Um, I'm going to get the uh, the recesses cut out. Once I've got the boards back on, I'll probably give you another shot of them just to show you what they look like. Um, with the nature of this, obviously, I'm going to have to make um, some pieces that go up up there. This is going to be a bench seat, so it's going to be like sort of a caravan setup. Um, so there will be backs on it anyway, but I always put like a, a jointing strip on there 
it's all covered in fabric and it's all sort of matches up and then up to roughly this point here that's where the galley will be and then the galley will butt up to the bench so everything's sort of secured to the wall anyway so yeah there we go right i'm going to crack on and get this uh get this side in i'm going to put the boards in on there cut all the recesses out and i'll be back with you shortly see you in a bit Curtains, right. <laughs> I've had a change of plan. I'm sick of being inside the van, to be honest, and it's a cracking day out here, so I'm going to do the curtains on the back doors. I'll probably get the ones done on the inside as well, but for now, let's look at the back. So, as you can see, this is pre molded to the top, which is going to be all right to tweak. It will go in roughly, um, that's not a problem. The issue is on the bottom, because that is completely straight, and that is not going to fit in that little recess there, so you have to bend it up these pieces uh, there so there and there I've got a little tool that comes with the main curtain kit which is a godsend on these type of jobs because you can't bend these by hand and if you do you end up breaking the track and bending it out of shape so keep watching I'm going to show you how we're going to do it today I hope you enjoy it um, if I can get a shot of the main curtains when I've done those as well I'll add them on to the end of the video but for now let's crack on with the back Right, so it's pretty simple to secure these to the van. Um, all you're gonna need is a drill and a 2.5 mil drill bit, okay? Now listen, a two mil drill bit is too small, a three mil is too big, and I know it don't sound a lot, but it makes a difference because you're dealing with these. I've tried to do a close up on this and I'm really gonna struggle to do this, but this is the securing screw. It's like a little self tapper, right? The idea is that you can put um, a Phillips head driver in that and you can screw that straight in, no chance. Because I'm telling you now, whoever's done this at home and they've already tried these screws or traders out there will tell you these are an absolute ball ache. The head on these screws is so delicate, it's all butter. As soon as you put a Phillips screwdriver in there, it just rounds it straight off and they get stuck. The 2.5 mil drill bit, for me anyway, um, it works a treat. They are on the border of, of like melting <laughs> I've said they're like butter but it feels like they're melting as you're tightening up they start stretching and, they, and you can round the heads off these so easy so if you're doing these re be really careful with this um, I think there's three in the top which I'm going to have to drill in um, and then you just screw them in very gently right I'm going to crack on Get the first one in there first, do the middle one, and then do the one on the edge. Did you see how gently I'll put that in there? Don't push it to, to screw it in, just gently screw it. There's enough tension in there just to hold that on, and then three of those together is just enough, okay? So I'm gonna crack on with the other ones. The head of that was just trying to round off then, just as I was getting told, okay? So all you need to do is just nip these. I'm telling you, they're savage. can't really see this unless I move the camera so I'm just gonna have to go for it okay let's have a look up here um, 
there's a very slight gap at the top of there uh, here so what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to put um, a piece of wood on there and I'm just going to have to tap it I'm just going to have to tap it flush because what will happen if uh, what will happen is if I try and do that uh, and screw that in with the screw it's probably going to round itself off so I'm just alter that um, just need a uh, block of wood any sort of wood give it a tap and it's quite soft so it should uh, mold itself into the frame a little bit better okay give me two seconds and be back now these as I say these are pre-curved but it only sort of gives you a rough guide I'm really struggling to see that with the light in my face but um, I think you know once that's screwed in which will be like that you know you can see the difference there and the gap being closed up so that's just enough now um, there is going to be obviously a, a board that comes across here and comes right down to about there so it's going to be covered anyway um, so you don't have to be too critical as long as it's in in the rough sort of shape of the uh, of the aperture um, you'll be completely sound on that right just going to screw that in it's a nightmare with this isn't it this uh, this tripod just want to take the tension off the screw a little bit there and then you can see how easier that is now to screw in it's just coming up to the bolting point and that's enough there um, you don't want to go too mad on that because you can crush the uh, crush the track it's it's put a bit of a crease in the track there but there's absolutely no other way to do that because I've tried doing that with uh, my hand and, and trying to mould it. It doesn't work. You end up bending this part and then you end up having a sag in that piece there. But this piece will fit and then that sags out and then you start getting problems on the way back then. It is very problematic if you do, you know, you've, you've got to draw the line somewhere uh, how you do these sort of things. The best way, as I say, is a block. Just tap it in, mould it. I'm going to have to do the same for the bottom. Um, and then what you can do is just tweak that very slightly on the end just to pull that in um, but yeah that's it that's the first one in all you've got to do now is put some end caps on so I'll put an end cap on this side because when I feed the curtains in that'll stop the curtains coming out this side so the top and the bottom on this side will have end caps it's just the same again I'll show you an end cap so this is an end cap let me try and focus that that's the end cap all you do is just feed that into the track now they are handed so you have to work out which one you're going to need for uh, each side of the track um, I like to put um, a bigger screw in these like a drywall screw because drywall screws bolt really well um, and they also fit in there nice and tight so um, you know it keeps it keeps the end of the track nice and safe uh, and it also gives the track a bit more support than those three little screws so I'm just going to work out which one I need on that side which is it's actually the other one so it's tapered on the other side and I'll get that in that will say there hopefully drawable screw just going gently don't go too mad just lift it up just make sure the gap is the same all the way around don't go too mad on that because it will crush the plastic tab and then let's try and get a closer look on there now and there we go that's the end of the track in so I'm going to move on to the bottom now. I'm going to do the same for the bottom. Um, this is going to take quite a little bit longer because, as I say, it's going to have to be um, shaped. Uh, but you get the general idea. They're pretty easy to put in. As long as you take your time and you're not too bad on the, um, on the screw heads, as I said. And if there's any tension at all, back it back out. Make a little bit more of um, a hole in there with the 2.5. You may have like a burr in there or something. Just in and out a few times. Don't go mad. And then that's enough for it just to grip. Um, and take the tension off the track, screw it in, and it'll stay in. Right, I'm going to carry on with the bottom. Christ, that's some exposure. <laughs> right, I'm by the back door, so that's just the way it goes. Um, here we are on the bottom. So, in the other videos on curtains that I've shown you, it's pretty much the same as those. So, what you're going to do is you're just going to offer it up to the area that you're going to be putting it in. Get yourself a marker pen. Um, and on the back, you just want to mark roughly where you're going to be bending so there's going to be a bend about there um, and there's going to be a bend roughly there and then I may bend the top of that round slightly 
Um, but the whole idea of this is just to get this to bend into the creases. You don't really want to be going too mad on this side. Um, so most of the bending really needs to be on this area. So the track will probably come up to about there. And then the same on the other side. You don't really want to snake it round the top because there's no, there's no need for that. Um, the way I do my board, I'm going to have to show you this on this one. Uh, the board actually comes across uh, most of that, that area there. So as long as that's covered uh, with the board, then you don't need to worry about that being seen. So it's, it's quite good at sort of covering that area up. Um, but yeah, I've, uh, I've marked that now. So I'm not really going to uh, go too in depth on this, but if I just turn this, you can get an idea of... Uh... Right, so basically, this focus is an there. Um, you can see the mark on the back there, which is roughly there. So what you want to do is you don't want to go too mad on this. You just want to start bending it gradually. Okay. Bending that into shape. Now, if you've got a voice, obviously this is going to help loads. But that is roughly what you want to do there. So I'm just going to check that against the aperture that I've got. I know that's not going to be anywhere near at the moment. Um, but it will give me a good indication of where I need to be. So let's just go back over there. There is actually um, a tool that you get in the uh, in the kit for the big windows, and it's actually a bending wheel. Um, I may set that up in a sec just to show you how to do that with that. Um, if I can't get this end piece bent enough, then I'll use the bending wheel. But so when you come into there. It's a nightmare. Um, you can see it's not far off. Obviously, it's, it's the end there that needs to be curved up a bit more. So, um, yeah, that, that's not too bad. Um, I'm going to give this sword a little bend here. So that's going to be bent next. Um, and then we'll see where we are on that one. Okay, so there's the little uh, the little track I was on about. You can get this in the bigger um, curtain packs. They, they actually give you, um, give you a little jig with it. Uh, and I've just kept this one ever since. So all you do is you just place it in there um, and you just start tweaking it, you know, just start bending it around like that. Um, you can work your way around um, and it's just a great little addition to um, to your toolkit, to be honest, because if you're doing your van at the moment or you're doing a van in the future, just keep on to it, two screws into a piece of board, job done. So I'm just going to keep tweaking that. I can't do this really because um, with the camera, I can't set the tripod up, tripod up properly and I'm trying to do this with one hand. So uh, I'm going to offer that up to the van now, actually. It's not it's not too far off, um, as you can see. So that's going to sit in there. It's only that middle piece that needs a bit of a tweak. So I'm going to do that. Um, I'll do the other side as well. Um, and then once I've bent it all into shape, I'll be back and I'll show you the finished result. All right, see you in a minute. Okay, so there we are. Um, that's about as good as it's going to get, and you can't really push these channels too far. Um, if you go really, really bending them and, and snapping them back and stuff like that, you lose the line, you lose the channel shape, um, and it comes really, really difficult to get it back. So I'm happy with that. I know there's a few little gaps underneath, but as I said, you don't want to push it too far, and there will be... Um, the board is going to run along the top of there anyway so you're not going to see any other track to be fair um i'm happy with that i'm happy with that result um as i say you've got to draw the line somewhere with this type of job and the back doors are probably the most difficult area to mold um mold the track to without damaging the track so i'm going to leave it at that i'm going to get the curtains in now and then i'm going to put the end caps on um, and that's that side done shazam <laughs> oh god i make myself laugh honestly right here are the curtains. You can have grey, no that's black, uh, black or grey. We're going with black. Black on grey always looks better, don't it? So yeah, black is what we're going for. So this is going to be the inside. What you've got on these curtains is a nifty little system of feeding these little puppies through there. Getting the top in, no problem getting the bottom in a little bit more tricky so put the bottom in first then do the top sounds mad but when you do these you'll see what I'm saying on each side is a press stud and I've also got a spare press stud that you screw onto the frame um, I'll put the press studs in 
sometimes they're used, sometimes they're not, but it's just nice to have those in case you want to just keep it definitely shut. Um, it is only one curtain per window. So on the bigger windows, it's two curtains, obviously, to, to cover the area. But on the back doors, because they're only a small area, one is enough um, and they bunch up nice and you get a nice sort of sealed um, like a blackout if you like so I'm going to start threading these through this is going to be pretty boring so I'm going to do a time lapse right see you in a minute Feel the burn. <laughs> oh my god, that's the most exercise I've done in ages. Right, those are the curtains in. So let's just have a little look back from over there. As you can see, they're in. Get a bit of focus. Uh, they're in. So all you need to do now is put your uh, track end on that one up there, lock it in place, uh, put the press studs in on which side do we go in? Put the press studs uh, on that side there because this is the main bulk and then that will close towards the center of the van and then the customers can actually press stud that to there and that will never open um and jobs are good and right i'm just going to finish that off now and uh i'll see you in a sec Okay, I'm gonna get the press studs in now. Um, I've just noticed in this pack, they've started putting four press studs in. They only used to put two, so that's a bonus now because this side can actually be pinned as well as the other side. Um, this one on the, the center of the van, the, the angle of it is actually a little bit out. So what happens is when you put your press studs on that side, um, you can see down in this corner here, there's a bit of a gap but that's why I make um, my boards that cover that. So when the curtains are drawn, it actually looks level. It'll make sense when the panels go on. Um, but yeah, you, it's a bit of a compromise, you know. It's having tinted glass on the back as well anyway. And by the time these come across the board, you don't really get any lock coming in. So it'll be fine. I'm just gonna get these press studs in now. Um, and then that'll be it. I'm gonna put the uh, put the panels on um, in a couple of days. I'll, I'll have to leave the, uh, the doors open. Um, and leave the stuff off the back because I do all the fabric and all the covering of all the actual um, ploy panels in one go so they won't be going on yet but yeah we'll get the press studs on anyway okay there we go then that's the finished article as you can see on the left hand side there is a bit of a corner there but my panels when they come on they shape right in there so you don't really get a problem with that um, that is how the kit comes um, there's no way around that uh, I've, I've tried different ways of sort of moving the track around a bit more um, that's great but even the press stood on the curtain is in the wrong place if you if you get what I'm saying so I really don't see a way around that um, and it's I don't know a bit of a weird design I suppose um, but you just have to work with what you got and, and, and that's what it comes like so uh, yeah so the panel will, will sort of go across there and then it cuts up there and then that, that will all be fabriced anyway so um, we won't get an issue with that. Um, yeah, that's it. I just want to show you something. 
I've got seven screws left over, right? And that is because they know that the screws are no good. Um, seven little screws left over. Now, I'm no expert on sort of uh, mathematics and that, but surely if you're putting seven extra screws in each pack and there's thousands and thousands of these curtains going out, wouldn't it be better to just make some proper screws and have like a stronger head on the screws? Because they are absolute dog shit, honestly. It, I mean, if you're used to working with them, you can sort of get around it a little bit, but um, you have to be really careful with them. They're really, really bad. Um, and yeah, if anybody's watching who makes these curtains, just put some proper screws in. Proper screws with proper heads on, job done. So there we go, that one's in. I've also done the side door. That one's in there. There's going to be a full panel going on that door, so that's going to look quite uh, quite good when that's on there in the fabric. Um, I'm losing the light rapidly now, so I'm going to conclude this video right there. Um, the ones behind me still need to be done. Um, these, these side ones have took a little bit longer than I thought they would, so I'm going to knock it on the head on this video. Um, the next video is going to be um, maybe getting the side panels in and the laminate on the roof. So that should be quite exciting and uh, that will really, really transform the look of the van, to be honest. All right, thanks for watching this one. Um, I'll see you on the next one. And don't forget to like, subscribe and share the video. See you later. Bye-bye.